What's up, everybody? My name is Russ with RWGResearch.com. So, don't mind the mess in here. I've just been working. All right, so what I want to show you guys today is I want to take one of these batteries. This is a two-cell graphene UR UAV high-voltage 100C battery with an XT30 on it and a balance plug or a charge port. I want to turn those into a single cell like this with a BT 2.0 connector on it. Okay, the beta flight connectors. So here is a 450 beta flight battery. It's got a little plastic case on it. It's been glued on there well. And it's got the proper new style FPV, beta FPV. A um, little bit more power you can get through this thing. Okay, it's a BT 2.0 connector. Here's their part number if you're interested. And I was able to acquire a set of five a while back and have been using the other ends. I never used the battery side and I got a hold of these today uh, for a really decent price. And I'm going to convert them over to singles. And you might be asking, why would I do that? Well, I'm flying this homemade little thing which I haven't finished making a video on yet. And I really tried to keep this light. So, this battery right here, let's look at it. Okay, I'll read it off. So this battery says it's about 1.2 ounces. I mean ounces because that's what this scale reads at. So it's about 1.2, okay, as a whole battery. If I grab the ones I've taken off, all of the goodies, so here's the pile of goodies. These are now 0.9. So a little bit lighter, if I weigh this stuff. 0.35 so that's a lot of that's a lot of weight right there so these beta FPV batteries are 0.9 as a set all together here I've got these without the plastic housings on them and they're 0.9 so pretty comparable but these are actually 450s and these are 550s so I designed a little file that is on the printer right now this guy right here, this guy is the housing. So what I want to do in this video today, let's see if one of these is going to fit. I want to show you, well that was a little close wasn't it? I want to show you guys how to do this yourself in case you were wanting to do this. Some people, they just don't know how to do this stuff. So I'm going to show you. Now I will, get, I will give a fair warning here. You absolutely need to know what you're doing because to be honest, um, you can short these out, blow them up, cause bad problems, burn your house down. So do this at your own, your own uh, way of doing things. Now some other people actually are taking the other styles, um, the BH connectors, and converting the batteries. But these are glued on here in such a way that I think it would be really hard to do. These, however, are not. And so we're going to convert this into this using this little 3D printed plastic housing I just made, which looks like it's going to fit. So, let me show you how to do this. We'll start by taking that apart. Alright, one thing I forgot to mention, so some of you are wondering, um, why I would put these type of connectors on a 100C rating battery. Well, these little guys right here are 30C constant current output capability and 60C burst. Okay, so these are a lot more than that, but the thing about this whole situation is, um, I don't plan on pulling that much current out of these. I just want these little 550s to be about the same weight as these 450s. So, so I just put the plastic housing on that guy. Oh, and the other reason for this is because I want to be able to plug these in my charger. So I have a high voltage little beta flight charger. I want these to be able to charge in there. Boop, 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 boop. Charge them up. So these are now 0.5 ounces. These beta flights are 0.45. Add a little glue on there, we'll be looking good. That's in ounces, by the way. All right, let me show you how to disassemble one of these and put on these connectors and 3D print and glue together the whole thing. Here we go. 
All right, so real quick, something important to know here. So these batteries are usually balanced or at least impedance matched, generally. If you're gonna be using these as a two cell, what I generally do is mark all my batteries with a number and always run the same number together. And that way they at least get the same discharge cycle um, from factory. But because these come as a pair, really what you should be doing is marking these things. Okay, so I'm gonna call this one A and two A and I'll keep the A's paired, I marked them one and two just so I know which one it is. But I'm gonna label them like this and I'm also gonna put the 550 on there, 100C. Okay, and the reason I'm gonna do that, I'm actually gonna put high voltage on there too. And then I'll put a piece of tape over this so it doesn't get rubbed off like it did already. And that's going to be a really good thing to do so that you keep these as a pair when you run them. I will be running these as a two cell pair. That's important to keep these together. Don't forget. Okay, here we go. Rule number one. Don't short these out and don't cut into the battery. I do not recommend taking a knife and cutting this off. It doesn't make any sense. Take a tool like a pair of non-sharp, um, in this case I'm just using a pair of tweezers or uh, not tweezers, but uh, anything. All right, just tear the wrapper. Then you can actually just peel it off. Don't cut it. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, gone. Next, usually these are wrapped. I would like to actually put some hard material back on these, but it'll add some weight. So this is like usually how they wrap batteries, keep them protected. So if you peel them off gently, you can actually peel this off. See how they got paper and cardboard and stuff to help protect the battery? That is important. These little Betaflight do not have any type of protection, which is not great. When you get into the battery side of things, you have to use some caution here because if you short a wire out, you're gonna burn it down. So usually they got like paper and Kapton tape and all kinds of stuff in here. So gently take all this stuff off. Carefully, not to short anything out. And what you're left with is the ability to get to the solder points of each one of these. Now these batteries are taped together. I'm actually going to peel this tape off. This is going to help me later. You can mark the batteries now if you want. I'm going to mark them when I'm done. So the reason I want to take this tape off right now is because I want to. I want the ability to pull these um, batteries apart. All right, as I take them apart. Um, if you got something to help hold this thing, that'd be great. I'm just going to set them here like this for the moment. Alright, now, the important thing about soldering. If you get these wires too hot, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have a bad day. So what you really need to do is turn your soldering iron up. I turn it up to about 700 degrees, even 800 if you want, but you got to be careful not to burn your flux off. So I'm going to set it up to about 700 because what you want to do is use high heat fast. You do not want to slowly heat the thing. And what I generally will do is pick a wire that I know I'm not going to get in trouble um, desoldering. This black one looks good. I'm going to pull it away a little bit. Hold the black wire. Pull it off. Being careful not to short my soldering iron against anything else. Pull off the balance lead. Do the same thing here. I'm going to work on the red wire, being careful not to short out my soldering iron. There's that. Turn this guy around. Lastly, center balance lead wire. And ultimately, if you're careful, 
I just melted the uh, glue. It appears to be a hot glue blob right there. Um, you can hold both batteries and basically they'll come apart. Now you got to be careful not to damage anything. Now generally, if your battery's been stamped together, you won't have solder points. These luckily have an extra tab that's been put on there so they are easily solderable. Is that a word, solderable? Anyway, point is, these are nice the way they sit in here. I'm actually going to try to get a little bit of this solder off so there's not so much solder floating around. Now, if you do that real fast, like I just showed you, that's the way to do it. And the reason that's the way to do it is because you really, really, really don't want to heat up these tabs too hot while you're soldering. So I'm going to turn my soldering iron down so I don't burn everything. Okay, so now you got that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to zoom in and do this in a spot where we can see it well. Hopefully it focuses. I'm going to take my... Beta FPV. Get those guys out. Now, you have the original one here. The flat side is the positive. Okay, generally I think that's the case even on these type of connectors. The flat side is always usually the positive. But double check that with a meter. Now, I don't know which way is which. I actually do because I already did this once. But I'm going to take my multimeter. Okay, I'm going to check it. This side with the tab. It's going to be positive, so my meter is showing positive. Okay, no negative sign. So this side is the positive. If you want to mark it, great. I'm actually going to do that just so I don't mess it up. So that's my positive sides. Okay, you can't really see that, but I marked it with a little red mark. Now, I'm going to just make sure these things are going to fit on here the way I want. And I also want to bend them down enough to where they're not over the uh, over the top of this because I want to put my plastic case on there later. So now's the time to get these where you want them. Very carefully, not to short these guys out. I'm going to bend these tabs over in a direction that goes towards center. So I want them to be about the same width as my connector here. Now, generally what I do is take a piece of silicone wire, like this is an old lead, tear this off, twist this guy, fold this in half, twist that guy, then I'm going to take my solder here, careful not to short my batteries. I'm going to basically turn my iron back up, 700, I'm going to tend my wire so it has full amount of solder on it I'll let you guys watch the struggles too remember the hotter your iron the quicker it'll burn the flux I'm also going to put solder on the connectors okay that's important because later you're going to need to do that. That's a great focus. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and do this one just to have it done. But if you tend, your, if you tend everything, including the wire and your connectors, your life is going to be a lot easier. If you bridge the uh, connection on these little connectors with solder, which can happen, um, it's going to be a problem. Okay, so now I'm going to hold this connector and I'm just going to tack it in place. I want this to be all the way down. I'm going to tack it in place and make sure it's where I want it. If it's in the center, if it needs to go left or right, it needs to be pushed over. That looks kind of terrible. I actually want to move it over a little bit. So just tack one side, get it in the center, get it where you want it. It looks pretty good. Now on the other side, I'm going to actually take this tend wire I used, okay, and I'm going to use it to attach everything together. I don't want to rely on just the solder 
I'm using the wire as like a filler. Again, paying good amount of attention, you're not going to short this stuff out. If it gets too hot, just let it cool off. Almost shorted this guy out. Did you see that? Okay, so using the wires filler. Now I'm going to take my snips, cut it off. And I'll do the same thing to the other side. Alright, so cut this off. You could use a bigger wire. I'm just folding this in half because it works. Tin this. Cleaning your tip often because the high temperature will definitely burn your tips. Alright, flip this guy around. This actually looks like a good solder joint, but I'm going to add this wire as a filler anyway. And I'm going to do that because I want this solid connection. Okay, the more the more solid the connection, the better off that this is going to be. Because you don't want any high resistance points. So I'm actually gonna flow again so a little bit more solder on there. Being cautious not to uh, short anything out. Not the best I've done, but it'll work. So, that's how that's done. So, you can see what that looks like. Now, if you really wanted to, you could add some Kapton tape or something between that, but really, I've never had a problem with these pins being close together like that. So, just to confirm we got the polarity right, again, I'm going to take my multimeter here. I'm going to hook up the red to the flat side. Yep, good, no problem. This is why my bench is a mess, I throw stuff around. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. I'll be right back. Alright, so next question. How do we basically do what they did right here? Now they look like they used some sort of a, I don't know if it's hot glue. It's kind of soft. It might be a, like a hot glue, but they basically potted this whole thing on. Now I don't actually want to use hot glue because these batteries get warm. I'm actually going to use goop of some kind, in this case E6000. And I'm just going to pack it around there, let it dry, and uh, call it good. Alright, so me personally, I usually take a couple of cardboard strips. Don't cut you towards yourself unless you know what you're doing. Alright, I'm going to take some cardboard strips. Alright, so the way I recommend doing this is not getting goop all over your counter. It doesn't stick well once it's out for a little while. Anyway, take some of this, whatever you want to use, and just coat it on the back side of these contacts the best you can. And kind of get that so that ain't going nowhere. Now, be very cautious not to get any glue on the end of this. And I'm going to put this on just past the front, like that. And then I'm basically going to hold it like this. Careful not to get glue in there. And I want to pack a bunch of glue onto the uh, inside of here okay on both sides don't worry about getting it everywhere you kinda want it to get everywhere it can get alright just pack it the best you can and then push it on pack it again until you're happy with the result. Just 
just use great caution not to get glue in the end of the connectors. It's going to be messy. Don't worry about that. Okay, that's basically it. I'm going to wipe this off with a paper towel, get uh, you know, a little bit of this cleaned up. All right, just got the last one finished. So, let's go ahead and weigh this guy, shall we? So we got a beta FPV, 0.45 ounces, and we got a homemade 550 at 0.5 ounces. Can't complain about that. This one's still drying, but there you go. A little bit wider. I could have made the plastic housing a little bit smaller, I guess, in the width-wise, but I had to get this inside there, so it's fine. Anyway, we'll let these sit overnight and uh, call it a day. If you don't feel comfortable working with batteries, you shouldn't try this. Um, honestly, uh, if you short these out, yeah, you could definitely blow them up, catch them on fire, burn your house down, so uh, it is a hazard. Be smart about it. And uh, if you want to try it, it's all you. You got to do it for yourself. All right, well, my mess did not get any smaller. In fact, I think it got worse. But now I have four of these single cell use cases if I want, 550s. Or I can also use them as doubles, which is what I'm going to do. The way I did that was I just soldered the other end onto my connector and made a double. So when I slide these in here, I'll show you. This will this other video will come out eventually, but the way that I got this work to work, these slide in my little homemade jobby, just like that. And the connectors are set up to be opposite directions of each other, and I just soldered a jumper on there. These are ho uh, complete homemade jumper connections. And then when I put them on there, they go on there like that, ready to fly. And when I'm done, pull it off. Slide them out, put the next set in. So that's the way I engineered this little guy. Alright, peace and love, God bless, have a good day, read the Bible more. Hope you learned something, and uh, don't be afraid to try it, but use caution if you're playing with batteries. Fire hazard, very dangerous, very, very dangerous. At 100C, you can basically short these out and go, poof, pretty fast. Alright, peace and love, God bless, bye bye.